On the 12th of March 1998, the city of Liverpool came to a standstill as two of its boxers, Shane Neary and Andy Holligan, came face to face for the World Boxing Union Light Welterweight Championship. For Holligan, a second attempt at a world title and a much easier proposition than his first one. He'd taken on the legendary Julio Cesar Chavez, then at the height of his powers, and acquitted himself well until running out of gas after five. But he'd never really gone on from there. This second chance had been a long time coming, and at 30 years of age, Holligan was well aware that this might just be his last chance of becoming a world champion. Neary had arrived in Liverpool by way of Dublin and was known to his legion of admirers as the Shamrock Express. This the second defence since taking the title from Darren Tyson. A man accustomed to flamboyant ring entrances, Neary had the support of Liverpool's Irish community firmly behind him and the ringside experts made the 29-year-old champion a slight favourite. For the winner, bragging rights to the city of Liverpool and the prospect of future championship matches. A good old-fashioned backyard scrap in prospect. Commentators for this one are Gareth Jones and Nicky Piper, and the MC is John McDonald. Here are the contestants, fighting out of the blue corner, the challenger. He's wearing the black and gold trunks, and weighing at 10 stone exactly. He brings a staggering 29 fight record, 27 wins, 19 by will. Knockout and only two defeats. He's a former British and Commonwealth light waterweight champion and former world title contender from the Phoenix Gym and the beautiful city of Liverpool, the hunter Andy Hull. the ring, fighting out of the red corner, is the champion. He's wearing a black trunks, he weighed at nine stone, 13 and three quarter pounds. He brings an undefeated professional record of 18 contests, 18 wins, 15 by way of knockout. He's the current undefeated World Boxing Union, like one away, champion of the world. His second defense, she, the Shamrock Express, Nuri. No love lost between these two. This is a big all Liverpool fight. First round, and the challenger, Andy Holligan, in the black shorts. And the champion also in black shorts. On the right now, Shane Neary, the champion. Shane Neary, the one with the hair, I think, yes. is uh, probably the easiest way to tell them apart. Well, both of these fighters straight into the action. There's not going to be any feeling out stages during this fight. This is going to be a war. As was... Uh, proved by the lengthy rendition of Ferry Across the Mersey, a sort of city anthem to go with the national anthem. This is more than a world title fight. More important than that is the championship of Liverpool. Good body punch from Holligan. Well, I hope this fight carries on like this, because it started in a, with a tremendous pace. Yes, I think there are a few who actually expected to go 12 rounds and certainly they've started off as though neither of them has that in mind. Very accurate hooking from both men, good solid shots. Defensively, both men are not very really good at the moment because they're both getting through. And these are two solid hitters. Getting the jab through there well and 
that might be an important weapon in the course of this uh, contest. Holland decides to start jabbing himself. And invariably, it does tend to be that the jab can be in a very, a very, very influential punch when two fighters come close to, together like this. Good shots from Holligan. There's certainly no feeling out going on here. This is uh, straight down to business. Both of these men possess one-punch knockouts. This could be over at any stage. Good shots from Neary, and I think he hurt Holligan there slightly. An amazing first round. Head's getting a bit dangerous there too. Yes, there's been a touch of the uh, rutting stags about them, and the referee's already spoken to both men, but I don't think they're going to take too much notice of him. There's uh, bragging rights on Merseyside at stake here. This is Neary's first fight for a year now. He's been champion since October 96, and it's with... Well, Holligan shown superb punching power, but back comes Neary. This was the style right the way through that first round. But look at the heads there, and that, I think, is going to cause a cut if they're not careful. The referee will do well to separate these two. Billy Graham being fairly emphatic about what he wants from Holligan there. Well, I heard the left jab. Oh, left it was, was it? It, it Sorry, was yes, left jab, that something was, left that jab. Was, that was the word I missed. Second round, the champion Shane Neary on the right with the red hair, Andy Holligan. Oh, great right up with that left top. Taken very well by Holligan. As however he described it, I think uh, Graham had it right. He does need to get that jab working because otherwise, he's, if he's letting Neary come in close, he's going to, to feel a few of these uh, these uppercuts. Oh, good left hand work from the champion. That's what he needs. Oh, right hand from Holligan. This surely can't go on like this for much longer. One of these two great boxes has got to give. You can guarantee that though that both will be as fit as they've ever been. This is a, a, a long-awaited fight on Merseyside and uh, probably more than any other fight in their careers. Maybe even Holligan against Chavez. This is the one that he's going to want to win and uh, they won't have skimped on training at all. I think the difference being he believes he can win this one, where maybe against Chavez at the time, he really was, oh well, a superb shot from Neary, and Holligan again takes it well. His two losses have been inside the distance, we know the Chavez fight. He lost to uh, Ross Hale, knocked out in three rounds in May 94, and that was a, a fairly bad knockout. He, he, he was unwell for a while after that. In fact, spent the night under observation in hospital. Um, nothing too serious, but uh, it was a sort of uh, knockout that does give you cause to worry about your future prospects. Well, Ross Hale, we know, is a big, big puncher, but nearly has Holligan on the ropes here. Holligan grabs him, he's hurt. Plunge to the floor, that's not a count, and the referee will not take it up. But the eyes did look glazed, Gareth. Indeed, and, and uh, 
I would tend to think that there was a case for giving him a, a count. Admittedly, he was sort of half wrestled to, to the floor, but his leg, his, it was a punch that caused his legs to, to buckle in the first place. Right and left reigning in on Holligan. Got to fight back or hold on, do something. I would go as far as to say as the, the bell saved Holligan there. Yes, that could be the case. It's certainly a big round for Shane Neary. I, I thought he edged the first, but I wouldn't argue too much with a, an even first round. But that one was definitely Neary's. And uh, Holligan, clash of heads there, that, uh, just before he took that first left hook. In fact, uh, I'm that surprised that there aren't any cuts yet, Gareth, but he went on to do this to Holligan. Indeed, he, he may not uh, leave him around long enough to cut him. Um, that uh, was, a, it was a good barrage by Neary, and Neary, as we know, does hold power. Uh, his one defence of the title so far was against the South African Jeremiah Malinga, and he stopped him in three. This is the third round coming up. Can he repeat that with Andy Holligan? It's the third round. And Holligan, on the right of your picture now, was in desperate trouble that last round. He did well to make it through this. He's shown in the past, though, he's got great heart and fighting ability, too. Referee rightly telling them, but again, they go straight back in, ignoring him. Seems just to be an incredibly strong man, Shane Neary. And straight back in and banging heads <laughs> together. <laughs> a, the gestures were probably easily comprehensible, but I'm not too sure that uh, two scousers are going to understand the South African accent. <laughs> Good change of angle with a left hook there from Neary. Holligan seems short on ideas at the moment. <laughs> Nearly winning the battle of boxing ability too. I think to a large extent he's being allowed to. When Neary throws punches, Holligan seems prepared to just wait for the storm to blow over before coming back with his own. Uh, and he's going to need to actually make Neary think about defending himself rather more than allowing him to take the pace as he has been so far. Holligan certainly has the punching power to worry Neary and a good right there. Oh, tremendous right hook. But back comes Holligan, he's taken that well. There were people that doubted his ability to take a good punch. But he's proving everybody wrong tonight. Whatever happens now, we know he can take a shot. Whether he can continue to take them, that's the question. Again, Neary finishing the run very strongly. Tremendous. That's the only words to describe this. This is the war that we all forecast, and the boys are doing Liverpool proud. Billy Graham giving the instructions and now we're over to the champions corner the shamrock express and i think 
Andy Holligan, the hunter, is being hunted throughout these first three rounds, or has been so far. Good right hook again there. Oh, it's a tremendous shot, Gareth. It is. The, the opening created with the left and then overcomes the right before Holligan had time to react. And uh, although he's showed he's got a good chin, there must be a question mark about how long he can go on taking punches like that. Trying to go forward in this fourth round. Shane Erie on the right of your picture, Andy Holligan now facing you with the, the bald head. Holligan trying to go forward, but every now and again then he's forced back as he is being now, I think, nearly the stronger all-round fighter. Neary's the younger man too, and I don't just mean that in the, in the sense of the calendar, there's only a, a year between them on the calendar, but Holligan is a fairly worn fighter in that he's got a lot of miles on the clock, whereas Neary's only had 18 fights as a pro and only ever boxed 13 times as an amateur, so he's a very young 29 in, in a ring sense. Been a professional for more or less only half the time of Holligan, Holligan's been a pro for 10 years, 11 years and Holligan five and, uh, and nearly five and a half years so as you say the miles on the clock are much less for Shane Neary certainly if this goes into the later rounds and stamina becomes a key issue that certainly should work in, Sh in Shane Neary's favor but Holligan coming a little bit more into it in this round and Perhaps he feels he's, he's got over the initial assault and uh, it's time to take over. Good left hook to the body. One of Holligan's pet punches. But Neary just looks a big all-round all -round fighter. Much physically the stronger man looking. Referee very quickly in there after Neary was guilty of pulling Holligan down. Good boxing to finish this fourth round from Shane Neary. It's been a better round for Holligan. It has. Neary started off well and he's finishing well, but Holligan quite possibly did enough in the intervening period to take the round on the judges scorecard a good fight back by Andy Holligan after being under pressure the first two or three rounds and surprisingly none of them are cut yet Good punches from Neary, and again the heads come together. But neither men showing any signs, Gareth, of, of, of cuts. No, I uh, don't know whether they've been undergoing the old treatment of washing in brine and God knows what else that the old fighters used to do to stop cuts. But uh, their skin seems to be standing up well to well, the punch. Whatever it is, is taking Holligan's hair off, that's for sure. Indeed, yes, uh, he certainly lost his last fight with his barber. Great left cover got the start, it caught Holligan by surprise. This was always going to be a great fight. 
both men have got styles to make a good fight but really Liverpool has been excited in building this one up for a good few months yes it's a bit of a throwback to the old days at Liverpool Stadium now sadly demolished the graveyard of champions they used to call it and uh, since then Liverpool's not really had a venue to hold major fights the Everton Park Sports Centre where Neary's had most of his career only holds 1200 this fight was taking place in a, a massive tent with 5,000 people erected in Stanley Park between Liverpool and Everton football grounds but it's and all 5,000 really enjoying themselves yeah it's a good atmosphere Neary needs to go back to the jab, and I think I can hear some of the cornermen shouting jab. As the pace has slowed a little, which was pretty much inevitable. It does seem perhaps that Neary, rather surprisingly, is the, the more tired at this stage. It seems to be taking something of a breather there. Good shots from Holligan. Neary is looking tired. Yeah. The referee seems to be worried about uh, water in, in both corners and. Uh, well, that's a good, good finish. Sorry, Gareth. It's a good finish from Holligan. Is that what they were trying to get rid of in the, in the opening I, of the run? I think so. I, I can't think what else it could have been. Certainly a good round for Holligan. And whether this possibly is the turning uh, point of the fight, that uh, having withstood the early barrage, Holligan is now taking command. Certainly a few problems for the people in Shane Neary's corner here to sort out. Well, here is action, and they're saying that Neary is panicking. Keep working for Holligan, and it was working during that last round. He came back very strongly after a, a good start for Neary. That's where Holligan had been letting Neary dictate the pace. In that round, he dictated it, and Neary yes. found it difficult to maintain. And the body shot there certainly hurt the champion. You can see the wince on the face of Shane Neary. Six round Andy Holligan on the right and the champion Shane Neary on the left. And Holligan's corner seemed very up for this round then. Keep it going, son, they said. They think he's doing well. Good shots inside from Holligan. He's nearly doing better when he keeps it at distance. He's, uh, the, the jab is scoring well. I just don't understand why he's not throwing more of them. That's better. Seems to have the longer reach, the champion. Well, this could end at any time with these two men putting everything into this fight. I think Neary is tiring, Gareth, and that's why he's not keeping it at long range. He seems to feel more comfortable in close, although it's not working for him. He's getting caught in Holligan on the attack. Oh, good uppercut, left hook from Holligan. And Neary coming back there. 
Gunshield out, is it? Looks like the the challenger's gun shield. And you can see the legs of Holligan, uh, they're wobbling. And his eyes do look glazed again. As it's one of these occasions where the corner are not going to be in too much of a hurry to get that gun shield back in. Holligan needs every second he can. Oh, nearly putting everything into these punches now. Oh, good shots! And surely Holligan, yeah, he's got to go down from that. Badly hurt. Can he make it through? There's plenty of time left in this round. Well, I've never seen that before. An eight on the floor, and then another few seconds when he gets up to eight. <laughs> yes, a long count beyond there. Oh, and the right hand hurts him. Left hook. This is going to be all over, surely. That's, that's it. The referee stopped it, and rightly so. Well, you've got to feel sorry for Andy Holligan. It's a great fight, one of the best fights of the year so far, if not the best. Haven't seen a fight as good as that for a long time, Gareth. No, it was a cracker, and uh, what made it so good, I think, was the fact that it, it swung one way and then the other. And uh, we went into that sixth round thinking that Holligan was getting on top. And... Shane Neary's told us we were wrong. Well, as usual, there we see Andy Holligan. He's got a very bad swelling over the right eye. That came up during the last round. And here we see the action. Shane Neary knew his man was in trouble. Great, great hooks. And that's, we're getting, well, that was the first knockdown. And it was more the wise old head taking a count on one knee rather than actually being knocked over uh, you'll see that, that Holligan decides look I've got to get out of this blitz and I'll go down on one knee and take the eight count and here we see this must be the, the finish tremendous power look at the back on Shane Neary there's not an ounce of fat on him and he puts everything into every punch there and the referee I think was just waiting and that was it all over there's a perfectly timed intervention there by the South African referee and uh, there was no point in Oligan taking any more he wasn't throwing punches back he was clearly badly hurt and would have got even more badly hurt had it been allowed to continue any longer very impressive finish by Shane Neary all the tiredness of the previous round vanished once he had Holligan in trouble There's the, the two, two boxers hugging, that's always nice to see. Ladies and gentlemen, two minutes and 42 seconds of the sixth round. The referee has stopped the contest. The winner, and still undefeated, World Boxing Union's light waterweight, champion of the world, C. Shamrock Express, New The York Hall in Bethnal Green, East London, November 1997. Colin Dunn and Zoltan Koloskai from Hungary meeting for the vacant WBU lightweight championship. Local support firmly in favour of Dunn. Born in Liverpool, the man known as the Dynamo had relocated to London, where his no-nonsense all-action style had won him a new army of admirers. Dunn had only suffered one loss in 24 fights, and he had the reputation for early finishes with 19 stoppage wins to his credit. His opponent was no mug either. 
Carlos Sky was the reigning WBU Intercontinental Lightweight Champion, and he'd mixed in good company. Like Dunn, he could punch, with 16 of his 18 victories coming inside the distance. The common